Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today we're making terracotta pots. This is part two of making simple game assets. So it's a full game asset creation workflow, but it's in a nice simple form for beginners to intermediates to understand. Make sure you've checked out part one. Links for that are in the description. You can also find lots of playlists on my channel. Just go to the playlist section and you can find free courses on there. If that's not detailed enough, then check out CG Boost's beginners course. That's fantastic and I can thoroughly recommend it. Again, links in the description. So this is where we got to last time. We've unwrapped our object and we're ready for texturing. Now for this, I've downloaded a bunch of textures, most of which can be found on textures.com. And I'll put the links in the description to the ones I use. So there's two ways of adding those textures. One is just to add the texture straight in. But this will only work if you've got a reasonable unwrap like we have here. And you can go up to the shading tab for that. Create a new texture down here. Shift data add texture image texture. Hook it up. We won't see anything yet. We've got to open our texture and find our texture. If you can't see the thumbnails, then you can press on the thumbnails option just there. So if I choose one I've downloaded and press open, you can see it adds a terracotta texture and it doesn't look too bad. You're obviously going to be able to see the seams where I've marked seams. And if you're doing it like this, it might be better to actually put the seam on the underside here rather than the top edge here. But that's a nice simple way of doing it and the unwrap should work reasonably well. We are going to have one big seam down the edge here. If I go into edit mode, you can see that's our seam. So you can see where the texture meets itself. So that's the most simplest way. And if you do a good unwrap, you shouldn't have too many problems doing it like that. We can obviously change aspects like the roughness to make it more like a terracotta pot. And you could even add this to the normals through a bump node. So if I press Shift A, Vector, Bump, I'll just move this up slightly so we can see. Because this is color information, we need it to be converted through a bump node. So we go into the height and then from the normal to the normal. And we can bring this down a fair old bit. This isn't the most effective way. Ideally, you have a proper normal map. But if you want to just quickly make textures like this, then this will work to some degree. However, this is not what I want to do. I want to create a more realistic looking pot. So I'm going to close that texture down and go back to the point where we were in our UV editing. So what I would rather do is paint a texture on so I have more control about where and how the texture is looking on my object. So for that, I want to go to texture paint. I'm going to press forward slash on my numpad to isolate this one pot. You can press forward slash again to get out of that mode if you need to. So at the moment I can't paint any textures, nothing's happening and it's saying missing materials textures detected. So to help us visualize what's going on, I'm going to bring down a new window and change this to the shader editor. Now that can cause lots of problems for beginners, but you go into the corner when your cursor changes to this cross, you can click and drag and pull out another window. If you end up with too many windows, right click between the two and join areas and use your arrow to decide which one you're getting rid of. Okay, I'll press N on this to get rid of the panel and create a new texture. And I've got no texture in here at the moment. What I can do is go across to this option over here. So under the active tool and workspace settings, where it says no texture, I can press the plus sign and create a base color texture. I'll call this pot one color. And at the moment it's a 1K texture, which is actually quite large for a game object. We don't really need it that big, but it's a good idea to use that size and reduce it later. It gives you more flexibility when you're painting. We don't need the alpha channel, so that will save us some space by turning that off. And we can just leave it black. It doesn't matter too much. Press OK, and you can see what happens over here in the shader editor. It's added a principled BSDF and an image texture node. So the one we've just created here, it's put over here. We can also see it down here if we want to. We press the down arrow and there's pot one color just there. And we can start painting onto our pot. If I start painting now, I've got white selected as you can see up there. And you can also see that down there and it's painting on white. I'll undo that. Now you'll probably also notice that this is really shiny. So if I go over to my texture and put up the roughness, it doesn't seem to be making much difference. And for some reason, when we go into texture paint mode, it defaults at solid viewport shading. Ideally it would default at look dev because that's what we need when we're painting. So now we're ready to paint. If for some reason you can't paint on your object like I am here, then it could be a couple of things. One, you've not unwrapped properly, or your face direction, if I click on my overlays over here and click on face direction, if any of it's red, it won't paint on it. That means the normals are facing the wrong way. You have to select everything in edit mode, 
So tab into edit mode, select all, and then if you press shift N, you'll be able to recalculate the normals. And there's an option just here in case it doesn't reverse those red colors. I'll go back out of face orientation and let's just undo the painting that I've done. So what I need to do is grab that texture and be able to paint with the texture. In other words, I want to use that texture as a stencil in here that I can just use as a brush. So what I'm going to do is pull this out slightly. I'll just squeeze these in a bit as well. And I'm going to pull a new window out here just so we can see what's going on more easily. You don't need to do this bit. I'm just helping you to visualize what's going on. Now, if we scroll down here, we've got an option where it says texture, not texture mask. That one changes your brush head. That's not what we're looking for. We're looking to paint with a texture. So if I open that disclosure arrow and create a new texture in here, then in order to change that texture, I need to go to the texture properties. So I'm going to open up the texture properties here so we can see what happens on both sides. I'm just going to close this texture for a moment and create a new one and you'll see it creates a new texture. So in order to change this texture, we must go to the texture properties. It's a good idea to rename it as well. Then you know the texture in here is the one that's in here as well. So I'll call this Terra Cotta and press enter. And then over here, you can see that it's the terracotta texture. So we need to bring an image in. We can use lots of different things like clouds, noise, Musgrave and so forth. But I want to keep it on image or movie and come down here to open. Then I can navigate to my textures folder and find a terracotta texture. Now I'm actually going to use this one because I think it's a better terracotta texture, but it hasn't quite got the right color. And I'm going to change that when I'm painting. So I'm going to open and you can see it updates in here and then eventually updates in here as well. Now I can paint on this now and it doesn't give such a bad result, but it's using a tiled mapping solution. And if I zoom in, you can see that it's tiling all over the place, which again, for this texture doesn't look too bad. But I feel like there's a better way if we change this to stencil, then we get this stencil here. And your controls for the stencil are generally under right click. So if I right click to move, I can right click and shift to scale and right click and control to rotate. So right click, right click shift and right click control are your controls. If you rotate it and you want to put it back and it's a little bit awkward, you've got the angle just here which you can put back to zero and it will flatten it out. So I can now go round my object and paint my texture. Now I prefer to do this with a graphics tablet, but this is fairly easy to do with a mouse, which I am actually doing at the moment. And there's a few things we can change because I think this is a fairly gray texture and terracotta is a bit more sort of pinky. And we can actually come across to our color and change our color slightly to a more pinky sort of color, somewhere around there. And you can see we've got a much closer to terracotta color. So you aren't completely restricted to the color on here because you can change your color wheel to affect the texture. You can also affect the tone as well. So if you want any shaded areas, maybe the, the bottom slightly darker, you can also do those sort of things. I'm going to undo that. You've got the strength of your brushes up here. So I can bring that down or shift F will change the strength and F will change the size. So what I like to do to start off with is just fill it all in. Oh, put my strength up again, fill it all in. I'll turn my pressure sensitivity off and bring the color back up to, to white and just go around filling it in. So this is a nice easy starting point and we'll want to tidy it up a little bit more after this. Okay, so whenever you want to stop seeing that texture, you can just close it and then we can have a look at our object. We can see that it's not done such a bad job, but occasionally we see a bit of stretching like this. So we can bring back our stencil by clicking on the checkered pattern and we've got our terracotta brush there with the stencil. I'm going to shift right click to change the size of it because I'm zoomed in quite a lot and just go to the middle area so it doesn't stretch around the corner. If I paint over here now and then get rid of my texture, you can see that it stretches across here. So I'll bring that back and paint in the middle so there's no stretching on the sides. Let's close that down again and let's have a look at how we're getting on. So a bit of stretching underneath there which needs to be sorted out. So I'm being careful not to go too far towards the edges. A bit of stretching on the inside here as well. And we're not looking too bad. A lot of stretching on the bottom though, so we'll quickly sort that one out. And we're probably going to see a bit of a seam around the middle here, so we can come in quite close. Keeping the texture fairly big though, and just go around and smarten that up. So I'm angling it so I don't get too much stretching down the sides. 
I'm being relatively precise here, you don't have to go this far, but I'm just making sure that it looks fairly nice and gives a good result. Okay, so I think that's looking better than what we had before with our other texture, but there's a bit more that can be done here. We can use the multiply brush, which darkens things. You can use the darkened brush, but the multiply brush is slightly more effective. And we can come in here with a nice low strength. We can still use the stencil, or we can just darken it and just make it look that bit darker and add a tiny bit of ambient occlusion in a sense where the light's not going to get in. So the multiply brush will actually take the natural color and just darken it. So I'll bring this down a bit and I'll put my pen pressure on now, which is this button here. If you have a tablet, you can put the pen pressure on and just darken these areas and it will keep darkening it the more I paint on it. So if I release my pen and paint a bit more, it will make it darker. So it's a subtle effect, I'll try and keep it subtle, but you can see there, it looks relatively nice. Another place is under here, we can add a sort of natural ambient occlusion and just come around here, just gently with a low strength. And you can see that's looking relatively realistic now. Again, you don't have to do these things, but it does help with the realism. The other way we can go is with the screen, which is a way of lightening the textures. You can again use the lighten brush, but the screen is a bit more effective. And you can see that the darken brushes are all together and the lighten brushes are all together as well. So screen, low strength again, and I'll put the brightness up slightly, and then I can just come round the edge of my terracotta pot where the light's going to hit it. And there we go, it's looking fairly effective. So that's a nice clean terracotta pot. Now we don't just have to stick to this one brush, we can create a new one. So I'll create a new one in here with the new button and I'm going to call this decal and moss. And we can see it's over here, decal moss, to make sure that we're on the right one. Image and texture still, and press open. And I'm going to open up one of these mossy colored decals. So I'll click on that one. I'll just show you where you can get those from because there's lots on textures.com. If you type in decals, you can have loads of fun painting in these decals on your different objects or just using them as overlays in your textures. I think that's the one I used but there's loads here that could be really useful for you. So I've chosen that moss and you can see this black area here. When I come over here, that's an alpha. I'll just right click and hold shift to bring down the scale. And we've got a great looking moss which is gonna come up from the bottom of our pot. So I can now just brush this lightly. Oh, do remember I've got the screen brush on and I need to change that back to mix, which is the default. Also, I've changed the color, so I need to put that back. So if I press on the color, I can put the saturation to zero, hue to zero, and it will definitely be in the middle. Let's bring that all the way up to white, in fact, and then we know it's gonna look exactly like my material here. So if I start painting, it's very light at the moment, so I'll turn that up just a touch, and then slowly move around my pot, using different areas of the decal. Now it may be that your decal is slightly skewed in, its, in the way it's projected. I think this one is actually. If I press image aspect now, it goes back to what it should look like. And, I'd, and I didn't really realize because it didn't make too much difference in this case, but it might do for yours. So image aspect will sort out the image aspect for you. Otherwise it tries to make it into a square. And I'm just gonna dab a few bits of colors around the place. as if the moss is spreading all over it. Let's have a look and see. And that's not looking too bad at all. If you ever need to quickly see what it looks like, you just move your mouse away and the stencil disappears so you can see what it looks like nice and quickly. And there we have it. A nice looking, fairly realistic pot, perhaps a bit darker in the middle here might help. And there we go. Last thing to remember, very important, image, save your image. So this is the texture over here that you'll need to put into your game engine. So find your folder, press save, and if your image has a little star just there, then it needs saving and you've made some changes. So if I make changes now, a star appears there. I'll just undo that and image, save. So there we have it, some nice simple game assets. Let me know if this tutorial is helpful to you. Show me your results by getting across to the Discord server. And if you want to see other game assets like this, then let me know. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.